Hold it, hold it, hold it. Performance suspension. It's there right on the dash. In fact, look at the wheel hubcaps. WS6 performance suspension. This thing must handle awesome. It looks fantastic. It looks all high tech. It looks the part. How does it actually handle? Well, it handles like crap. I'm not going to lie here. My grandmother's Toyota Corolla from 1995 handles better than this thing does. And that's not even a joke. Let's just get into it, guys. WS6 means wide stance six pieces. And it was something that came out from Pontiac. And, you know, it means you get thicker sway bars, you get thicker, better springs and a wide stance. So you get like thicker wheels or whatever. Whatever it means, it's ancient technology. It does not translate to actually good handling. What we need to do here is upgrade this handling so that this car can actually live up to these badges all around it because quite frankly, it's embarrassing how this thing handles. So let's see what we can do to fix this thing up and make it handle like it says it does. And now, our feature presentation. So of course, we're going to be getting into improving the suspension and overall handling of the car. But before we do that, we have to address probably one of the biggest issues when it comes to the handling of a car and that's how it stops the brakes now when i first got the car this the brakes were just terrible i couldn't believe it they really wouldn't stop the car very well and oh well after taking the wheel off and taking a close look it was pretty evident why this car had been up in um idaho and was it idaho that i got it from ohio ohio okay <laughs> sorry okay this car had been up in Ohio and of course it's a snowy climate up there it's originally a Florida car but it had been in Ohio for a couple of years about two years or so and during that time of course a little bit of rust had set in on some of the surface parts and nothing there's no rot in it there's nothing wrong with the the car itself it's still a solid rust free car but things like the brake discs slash rotors were rusted and they were pretty badly pitted and rusted and to the point where it was actually affecting the braking of the car. So I kind of did a quick little um, bush mechanic thing where I sanded down some of the rust and the pits off of it so that I could at least use the car and not fear for my life. And that kind of fixed it, but it wasn't good enough. I did buy a brake kit and at the same time, I bought a bunch of stuff for the suspension. I bought some lowering springs, some uh, Eibach, uh, I think it's the Sportline lowering springs because I kind of wanted to change the way it looked a bit. And that, and that would, of course, improve the performance too. So I bought those and I bought a Wonder Bar and some sway bar end links with polyurethane bushings and stuff. I also got some drilled and slotted rotors and new wheel bearings, a couple of other little bits and pieces, new ceramic brake pads. What we'll do in this video is we'll put on the wonder bar and the polyurethane sway bar end links. We'll put those on in this video and then there'll be a part two where we tackle the lowering springs and the new disc rotors and wheel bearings and that kind of thing. Okay, we got, got ourselves some lovely new sway bar end links and we actually have something called a wonder bar and I'm going to install it into the, the Firebird today. What you see before you is what's called a wonder bar. It's basically just a brace that goes underneath where the sway arm is and it stiffens up the suspension, but it actually fixes a very big problem in these cars, which is um, where the steering box mounts to the frame or to the body. It starts to tear after a while with all the forces. So yeah, this is a good upgrade. So it's really easy to install this wonder bar. You know, you get them from various different manufacturers. You can make it yourself if you're good with a welder. Here you can see the stock sway bar that's in there. And you can see it's pretty thick. That's part of the WS6 package. But basically where it mounts to the frame, and you can see there are a couple of bolts. You just loosen the bolts. You shove that thing in there and then tighten the bolts. You don't need to modify anything. You don't need to have any special hardware. You don't need to cut or weld or do anything. So it's one of the easiest installs you can do. And it makes a big difference. Okay, now these aren't terrible, these. But they're not great either. What you do is, underneath there's a bolt here that you have to get to. And then you have to obviously put something. And I'll get my light back. Have to get something over the top here, 
and then you loosen it from the bottom. But we're going to be taking this sway bar and link out, and I've got those lovely new polyurethane bushing ones I'm going to put on instead. The reason I'm doing this is when you turn the car full tilt, it just feels like things are janky down here. Now that I've got this new wonder bar installed, and after these new sway bar end links, I'm hoping that fixes that issue. Yeah, I know I said these didn't look that bad in the car, but they were pretty bad, let's be honest. The bushings were collapsed, a lot of them, and uh, there's rust all over the thing. You know, these may not seem that important, but they really are important to how your car handles. And it feels night and day once you put the new polyurethane bushings in there, or if you just replace the original bushings, to be honest. So take a look at these on your car, make sure they're in good shape, because this really helps with handling. So these have been on the car for about four months now. They still look fantastic and they really hold up well. While we're down here though, let's take a quick look. I'm gonna show you, there's the Wonder Bar. And I wanna show you what it's for. It adds serious rigidity. You see over here, this is where the steering box is attached, you know, to the frame over here. And what happens is, uh, if, without that Wonder Bar, Luckily, this car hasn't been too abused, but uh, you know, after a lot of abuse, you can actually see cracks forming here because there's just too much, uh, I don't know, uh, what do you call it, torsion or whatever. There's just too much um, stress put on this part of the frame. And so that Wonder Bar basically sheds the load between, you know, this side and that side, and it prevents any damage. So that's one of the reasons why you get one. It also, I'm not joking, it really changed the driving dynamics of the car. And that's because I feel like it was flexing a lot before and so you didn't get that tight feel. Anyway. So this was a quick job, it took me about half an hour. But you know what, it really, really, really improved the car. It feels so much tighter up front, so much more taut. It's a completely different driving dynamic. And I suggest it to anyone, if you're gonna do just one thing to your third gen Camaro or Firebird, that is to install a Wonder Bar. In fact, I'm pretty sure that from the factory, right at the end of the life of these cars, they were installing Wonder Bars as standard, but it was like in the last year or something like that. But it's just such a good idea. Join me in the next Formula to Happiness, where a lot of mistakes were made. Seriously, you're going to want to watch this because you can learn a lot from my mistakes and how not to injure yourself and, and that kind of thing. We're going to dial down the suspension. We're going to put on those new brakes. We're going to put in the new wheel bearings and we're going to improve the handling of this car even more. Can't wait to see you next time, guys. And until then, you know the drill. Keep it rubber side down. Don't make stupid mistakes, which almost results in you going to the emergency room and all that when working on your cars. And uh, stay awesome.